A huge hello to everyone watching this tips and tricks video by myself, Philip Cal, on obviously behalf of the Shaw Academy and once again I just want to say a thank you to everyone who attended my first lesson in the diploma in Photoshop. Now obviously I did get a lot of you to do a nice task for myself and I did say that if it was successful I would go about and create a nice tip and trick video for you. So that's what I'm going to do now. So bear with me and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Photoshop and we'll just dive into a kind of a few tips and tricks about customizing Photoshop for yourself. Now our second lesson is all about customizing Photoshop so when we actually really start to dive into it and get a lot more creative you won't be lost you'll know where all the tools are where the adjustments are so it really will help you to set a standard. Today is going to be a build upon our lesson one and a bridge to our lesson two to help you kind of set up getting ready for lesson two as we dive into a lot more information. So if you're like me and no matter what you have on you, you like to either accessorize, maybe you like to just bling bling up pretty much everything you have. The joys of Photoshop is that we can customize an awful lot of how it looks. If you've been using Photoshop for a long time, some people when they get to their newer versions, they don't like the color schemes, they don't like the setups and how everything is laid out. And the joys is that we can change this. Now for all of you who are concerned with the darker colors and the white image of the icons, maybe you can't see them as clearly as you want. I'm going to show you today how to very quickly change that. Now first of all we need to go up to the edit option in our main menu. Once we select this we'll get a drop down bar. Now I know that it's down the very end here where we see preferences but just scroll right down until we get to general. Now as with everything there is a shortcut so we can press Control K or Command K if you're on a Mac. Now this will actually open up a lot of different preferences that we can play around with in Photoshop. At the moment I recommend that you kind of stay away from this side of things until you get a little bit more familiar with Photoshop uh, and customizing it to your own liking. What I will recommend is that you go to the interface option here, which is the second one on the menu, and have a look at the appearance tab. Now for anyone like myself who has been using Photoshop for a long time, you might know that Photoshop has changed to this default of a kind of darker grey colour than what it used to be. For anyone who actually wants to change the appearance back to what they're used to seeing, it is very possible to do so by selecting the darker colour in your appearance tab. This is what Photoshop kind of was more familiar with until it got close enough to the end of the Creative Suite versions. The reason I use the default in my lessons of the kind of darker shade of grey is because I want to make sure that I'm at the same level as all of my students. I don't want to have any extra benefits that when I'm showing off what I do at a faster rate that you feel like you can't do it as well. So I will always stick to the defaults. But for anyone who possibly finds the default a little hard to see, there is two extra options in here to make your eyes a little bit easier. We have our kind of greyish, our light greyish here. And we also have our white option. Now the white option is quite nice because it makes the icon stand out an awful lot more. It can be a bit jarring on the eyes depending um, on your own colour preferences. But you can see that if we actually go over to the toolbar here in the in the left hand side, all of the icons are a lot easier to see in comparison to the white outlined icons. Now that is obviously a, a preference that it, you'll have to have with your own opinions, but it is up to yourself to change how you want everything to look. We also have the option to highlight color. If you look at my layers over here, we can see that we very quickly, the layer that I have chosen is in a grey box. This can be changed to a default of blue, so you know what layer you're working on. So depending on your colour background, you can see that the blue is always there, but the blue shade does change. We'll just go back to default for now. Lastly, I want to show you the standard screen mode. This will change our stage, where we actually edit our icons. Uh, our images, sorry, and this will obviously help you in any way to change how we view our images. If you want, we can start with a black, we can have our dark grey, and we can go right down to a light grey, as you see. And this will help your image stand out, you know what you're editing on and what you're working on. 
The joys of this is we can also actually select a custom color. So at any time we can come in here and choose any color you want to work with. Now obviously that green is a bit jarring on the eyes and we definitely would not recommend that. But just so you know that you can customize it to your own liking. We also have a drop shadow border, but we can change this to a line, which very simply just changes the, the actual border of your image that you're about to edit. Go back to drop shadow, and that is our preferences. Now, before I leave you, in my last lesson, I did show everybody how to add a quick change to this female's hair. So all I did is our U and saturation. By clicking on this, I get what we call an adjustment layer. Now this will be explained in lesson four in great detail, plus the mask that comes with it in lesson four. But I wanna talk about what I actually done in a little bit more detail for all of you because you've been so kind to help myself out. So in this U and saturation, which I will actually deal with in lesson three, we can use this hand icon here, which will create a dropper. By selecting a specific color with this dropper, it actually allows me to change the colors in that image and just those colors in that image. Meaning that if I actually change the color, you can see that the greens and the darker blues of our top are not changed. And this is great because if I want, I can come in here and I can actually select the colors that I want to change. So I can change the blues in the image once again. We can barely see a change, but there actually is a change in there. If I come out and I change the reds, we will see that the hair color and the face has a lot more of a change on it. And our master obviously deals with dealing with all of the colors in one full go. Now, do not worry if that is still a little bit too complicated for you. I just wanted to show you exactly what I've done. So you can play around with it yourself um, as we actually move on into our lessons. To get you all hyped and excited for our lessons as we get a lot more creative in lesson three. And obviously, make sure your preferences are set the way you want as we go into lesson two. Once again, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to watch this video. And I do look forward to seeing you all in our next lesson.